One way booby, ready or raw. We doing this the fly way, homie. My way. Oh, wait. I'm going 90 on the road, switching for a lane. When I'm dead and gone, remember one thing. I'm doing it my way. I'm doing it my way. I'm a smoke, I'm a drink, I'm a hit the What's up, you guys? It's your boy Dante Chang, and this is the Completely Unprofessional Podcast. My co-host today, Nikki Davis Miller. Hola. Our very special guest, comedian Rachel Wolfson. Shalom. Um, I just smoked a blunt with Rachel in the front, and I'm high as hell. I was wondering, so when I, I walked in, you looked like... Very I mean, I don't completely know how this is unprofessional. Go. Listen, the podcast <laughs> is called Completely Unprofessional. I am an expert at everything unprofessional. I show up to like jobs high. I showed up to your job high. No, I smoke I, I, weed I at work. I think you do a good job. No, I'm a great, I'm not saying I suck. I'm just She's saying a good worker. I might be considered what like by like society standpoint, unprofessional. Yeah, a I professional, unprofessional. Are, right. It would be in the handbook. Don't please don't arrive we prefer if you didn't take care of our children under the influence <laughs> of marijuana. No, this is yeah. not, this is, but this is LA. It's looked at differently. This is how I know this. I walked into a comedy club, the J Spot, with a blunt in my ear. They the never, place is called the J Spot. That's go, true. That's yeah, true. That's a good point. Like, I didn't go up, and I, all I had was a blunt in my ear. The promoter booked me for another show and didn't see me perform. Just saw the blood in my ear. That's what's up. <laughs> Where is the spot? Yeah. I need to be going there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Mr. J Spot in Inglewood. Oh, hell's yeah. I need to be up in the Inglewood but in the you neighborhood. Can't smoke there. That's which is weird. Oh, you have to smoke outside. Fucking Sorry a miracle. About that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um so what are we gonna talk about? <laughs> Speaking of unprofessional. <laughs> oh we're be- being very so on brand. What, right what now. do you think yeah. about like like uh, I don't know. I recently got affected by the weed loss. I don't know Compliance. why. Compliance. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really didn't think it would be a big deal, but I'm a little bit. I don't know. I was disturbed by it. I, w- I walked into a weed shop and every all the prices doubled. Yeah. And it kind of like, I don't know. It, it bugs me a little bit. Well, the government's involved now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So basically, what happened is, come since January. Um, weed brands had six months grace period. Thank you for adding the sunglasses by the way oh this you're so very, welcome yes you look very on brand um <laughs> so yeah they had six months to become compliant meaning their packaging had to be like child proof their brand they had to fall within line basically mm. with the government so july 1st rolls around a lot of the brands that you might have seen on the shelves are no longer there um it's only brands that are compliant meaning all of their product has been tested by uh, t- uh, testing places that say this is what's in it. This is the levels of THC, CBD. Everything is now different, like you said, um, because it's be- it's very expensive to become compliant. I mean, paying for packaging, their companies are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars for packaging. Where we live in a state that's very health conscious, we're banning straws, but companies are spending thousands of dollars on packaging for a plant. So, I mean. This is kind of what happens when think about prohibition, right? The beginning parts of like legalizing alcohol, it was probably really ugly. I mean, I can only imagine, I don't know if it was anything like what the weed Mm -hmm. industry is now, but basically we're in the parts, uh, the beginning parts of fighting prohibition against weed. So, um, this is just the first generation of people who like, it's going to be different in 10 years is basically what I'm saying. We have to suffer for it, but yeah. I feel your pain. I mean, there's a black market that's thriving now because of it. So, yeah, no. Um, Is that good or bad? Do you think? Uh, well, I mean, here's the thing with legalization and compliance, um, you're going to give and then you're going to get. So the plus side of this is now you, you know, your medicine is clean, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the stuff that you're buying off the street, you don't know if it's been sprayed what it is, you know, like what they did to make it look like it's kind of like walking into CVS, having a stomach ache and just like grabbing off the shelf. Like this tastes good. You know, is it really making uh, you better? But um, you don't. Yeah, you're not going to buy it off the street. It's safer. But you can still, though, there's I think there's still people out there who were selling to dispensaries who now are like 
you know, if you want, I can give you like a really good breaks if you don't go to the dispensary. Of course. Yeah. The black market is thriving, but then also on this, it's, they'll get in a lot of trouble. Oh, really? Like, yeah. If they get caught. No. Yeah. Like they will never be able to, if they wanted to become legal, it won't even be an option for them. So dumb. So, um, well, I guess I understand. I just think that stuff. in a, it, we'll see what it looks like. Part of the reason why I liked working in the weed industry before it was legal. Cause it, it felt like the culture, you know, it was like you walk into a weed shop, there's smoke going on. People are dabbing in the back. People are, there's giant jars of weed. That's they're weighing it out in front of you. That's never going to be seen again. And I was like a part of that culture and it felt really cool. And I'll be able to tell my grandkids someday back in my day <laughs> now, it feels like, now it feels like security like you're yeah. like wa getting yeah. watched while you're doing well it's this. like you're walking into the apple store basically of weed and everything is very um you know mainstream like things that like i used to buy an ounce for 190 it, it's 400 dollars now what the same place that i used to go to so either I got to just look for a cheaper place or grow it yourself. Grow it yourself. Uh, no, yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm too lazy and I just don't want to figure out how to do it right. I know I'll fuck it up for the first. You few. could hire someone to grow it for you. Well, then maybe we could work something out. Is know? growing it illegal? No. You okay. Can, so you grow up grow to like, it. I think, I don't know. Eight what ounces the, or something. Yeah. You can grow up to, yeah, up to eight ounces. What's that? Like 20 plants maybe? Or I don't oh. know if that's like, it's a lot. It's, yeah. a, un, it's like an unnecessary amount of, or like maybe it's eight plants. Or six plants. I don't know. But what you just can't that? sell it. You can give it away and you, you can give it away, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, if they're 21 plus. Yeah. With a donation. I don't think. No, I just think if you're you 21 plus, you can give it away. Yeah. You can just give it away. I yeah. think. Don't quote me on that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I asked a dispensary because I wanted to hand out joints at my last comedy show. Mm -hmm. And I asked her what the new law is laws are and she said as long as they're 21 plus so i don't know that's from a dispensary it's like if you could buy someone a idea. shot that's 21 plus yeah absolutely or same thing probably if you're and, and you can be 18 if you have a medical card so yeah so but, i guess um i don't know i, I don't know if i like I, I didn't care i thought it was a good thing for it to be legal i guess i guess from just being i don't know just having to pay double just pisses me off i mean it's like, yeah, it's it's hard for us to see the benefits of it now. But from, I think, in a couple years, you know, I think prices will reduce. Yeah, it will. I think to. more okay. brands will come back. The, the laws will change because they'll realize, like, you're not packaging alcohol, which yeah. kills you. You're not packaging guns. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? These packages like, are crazy, too. It's, by the way, yeah. Oh, they're I stoner. Wanted make, I wanted to point that out, too. It's like I give up. so not, like. Um, it's, it's not necessary. It's un, Yeah, it's like. Uh, it's what it's is too it, hard for me to open. It's pollution. It's just like. Uh, it's I, a waste. I, I went and got, wasteful, uh, yeah. I went and got uh, one joint. Uh -huh. And he gave, the package for it was like. This big, it was like size a of a t-shirt. You have to crack a coat. Like you have to open a box and then there's like a smaller box and then there's like a smaller box. Like, like pretty Russian much you get to like joints. the tiniest yeah. joint. <laughs> no, but it, it's, it is ridiculous. Some, like some of the edible, uh, I'm, I'm just like, I need an edible and I can't open. I just, I will give up, you know, like I'm, <laughs> I'm like, fuck this edible. <laughs> like I'm now angry, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. It's happened to me too. It's, uh, it's, it's, it sucks. It's, um, also like the gummy bears the things that they just you can't market have anything that kids would be like i want this you know oh, okay oh yeah. that's what happened to the gummy bears yeah so you the gummies that you'll see will be just like circles you know they won't look like fun they're gonna be <laughs> like they the, i mean that's what i loved about weed that's what you know and and i will miss that and hopefully we'll be able to see that again because uh, that's a part of the culture, you know, is, is the, yeah, I think comedy and, and weed go so hand in hand and weed is so good at for you, for you, at, not well, everybody. No, no, I mean, me I mean, too. I just think in the culture of can't, if you're talking in the scope of cannabis, like we're really good at satiring things in our, in our own way. So mm -hmm. like there was like Weetos, which were weed Cheetos, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, it's just, it's such a part of the culture that I'm like, that's mm -hmm. funny, you know? Yeah. That's really crazy. I, I don't know. For all you people that fought for this and was hoping this day would come, we might have fucked ourselves, at least for the time being. My advice is if there is a state, if if there is a state in our country where it's not completely legal in a sense of it's decriminalized or it's it's just medical, mm -hmm. invest now and open up 
a shop or a grow or whatever before the government comes in and takes over because now it's just so impossible to get into weed. Like before what before what happened in July, it was the wild, wild west. You could have a weed company. I could have a weed company if you had a thousand dollars or, you know, whatever, whatever you wanted. My friend built a a million dollar business off crystallizing weed vapes. And now she has a legal weed brand, Mm. but unless you have that billion or not billion, but you have to have a million dollars basically now to, you know, are you grandfathered in though? If you've already started it before the regulations change, uh, in a sense, it, it depends. It depends on where you were as a company. I mean, did you, uh, did you have, you have the money to, to, you know, support the test. You have to pay for testing. You have to pay for packaging. I mean, this is stuff that they didn't have before. All you had to do was have a good product. You went into the dispensary. If they liked you, they would carry your shit, you know? And now it's like, it's, everything is tracked from seed to sale. So they know where your shit is when it's there. This is not... I want to go completely off the grid and just hide somewhere. Everything yeah. is just so monitored. Everything yeah. is monitored. Yeah. I'm not now. And the higher I get, the more paranoid I get I'm about it. Well, <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is like everyone smokes weed, Democrat, Republican. It's not even a party issue anymore. Like the people at the top of the, of the government are, you know, they don't care about weed. It's not they're not, you know, it's not looked down upon the way that it was. It's more of a. People want to get involved because they see the the money behind it. And uh, so I wouldn't have anything t- to be worried about in that sense. I would just be, um, you know, be aware of just know that when you're going in there and you're paying a higher price for weed, it's because you're paying for quality and you are getting the highest quality of medicine in a safe environment where you don't have anything to worry about. Like the government is not going to come after you because it is clean. The product yeah. you just tastes like it just seems, you know pure. what you're consuming, Yeah, you know, and, and, it, and that's the thing is it is a medicine. I truly believe at the end of the day, like it is, it's a medicine. And so, um, you know, to be more aware of what you're consuming, that's, that helps you only more as a person rather than I've smoked stuff that has made me so paranoid. I don't ever want it again. And I know what the strain is and I'm glad I know what that is. You know, I hate those, but like people will smoke and have a bad time. They're like, it always makes me tired. It always makes me paranoid. Well, that's because you're not smoking what's right for you. You know, we're, I mean, CBD, which is part of the plant that doesn't get you high, which they're giving to kids who have like narcolepsy or, um, or, uh, sorry, nar- epileptic seizures, uh, is reducing their seizures basically down to like either one or a very low amount to what they were having before. And they also say like it fights cancer cells. Wow. So, I mean, we just need to have more, the more it's legalized and the more people, uh, consume it, it, it's, I think the better for all of us medically. I don't know. That's just my opinion. All right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm It'll happy. change. We'll see what it's like. I think, I think in a few years we'll see a shift in the industry where it won't look like anything that it looks like now, because look, look at how, look at the changes that it's already made, yeah. you know, and it's been around for like what, 30 years. It's mm-hmm. been in, in LA or 20 years or something. Yeah. Just like when the shops initially opened, prices were sky high. You know, and then like eventually people start lowering the prices and well, they I mean, were giving it away yeah. for a while. Yeah, it was. Well, that, that was, was right before times. compliance. Like mm-hmm. too, they were basically, I mean, everything was so cheap. They were, yeah, you know, so yeah. yeah. Well, that was because all so that many stuff stores closed down too. Right? Well, all that stuff was not compliant and they didn't have their, I mean, there is a whole in every dispensary that's legal, you'll see cameras now. They mm-hmm. they they have cameras in the back, so they watch because they can't. If they if people steal, they know that like they will. Wa- they have people watching the cameras, is what I'm saying. So they know what's going on in every dispensary, mm-hmm. and that's why if you're illegal, they will shut you down mm-hmm. because it's not fair to the people in in the people's eyes. It's not fair to them who has to pay all this shit and go through all this shit when people are just doing it illegally now, you know, so. I wonder if they're going to have like a state board that sort of comes in and checks everything out. Well, they have the Bureau of Cannabis Control, the BCC. It's a, it exists. um, And they're watching, you know? Yeah. So. The store on Melrose that I went to right by my shop was like, I don't know, it it, it got shut down and they were making like, and it's not because. Which one? Um. It's like Kirsten and Melrose. 
Well, two of them got shot there. It wasn't L.A. Right Con, was it? Huh? L.A. Con? I LA forgot Confidential? what they were called, but they were both. Really, I think so. What? I no, that's so. been around for years. Okay. I don't know. But one of them got shut down. Two of them got shut down right by me. It was very convenient for me. Now you guys have, now I got to go like four or five blocks. That's crazy. I hope it's not L.A. Con. They've been around for forever. K-Town Collectibles. That's where I saw your video. One. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Rachel has a video it plays where else? We have a, uh, my friend and I have a YouTube channel. Um, it They play in all the dispensaries, mm-hmm. like up and down California, mm-hmm. Northern and Southern. Our YouTube's uh, called The Bud with mm-hmm. two Ds. And we just make videos, um, high quality content, you know. Yeah, Rachel um, teaches how to roll a, properly roll a blunt. How to roll a blunt. And how, she's really good at it. Yeah, how to roll a blunt, how to roll a joint. That's useful. I'm I'm way too old to not know how to roll a joint. I still I, am not good at it. Oh, my God. It. You could totally do it, and you're going to impress people. I'll oh, teach people you. are going to just be like, oh, I'll, I'll teach you everything. It's all in the filter. Oh, mm-hmm. the filter. Mm-hmm. I never even thought to put a filter on there. Also, you'll have to practice. Yeah, well, yeah, practice. obviously. It, yeah, if you practice, but I, I promise if you just, like, do the filter the right way, it's so much easier to roll a joint, and it looks good. It's already kind of in place Yeah. yeah. after that. It's true. Just make yeah. it even. Mine always look pregnant in the middle. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you <laughs> yeah. just gotta you just gotta even it out. But the filter helps with that because yeah. when you start to roll, it catches the paper, and it just it, there's nothing there's nothing quite like. I mean, I would say sex is better or dessert, but there's nothing quite <laughs> like when you roll it and it rolls like perfectly uh, up and it's like tight. You know. Mm-hmm. Nice. So interesting about you, Rachel, <laughs> is um, your your dad was the one that. Did OJ's trial. Your mom was the one that did OJ's yeah. trial. Yeah. She was his judge. She was his judge. She was his judge for the robbery memorabilia case in Las Vegas. That's the, and she's the one that, that got crazy. him. That was she crazy. She did crazy. get him. She yeah. Well, him. She, I mean, she, it wasn't just her. It was a trial by jury. Mm-hmm. It was a jury trial. And he was convicted um, and served nine to thirty. He served 30, no, he served nine years, I believe. Uh-huh. I don't think he served, no, he didn't serve 33, but he was sentenced to nine to 33, but he got out because he was a good prisoner. <laughs> he seems like a good prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, yeah. Um, not a place to fuck up. He How like, long did he stay? Do you know? I don't even know. I think he was there for like nine years. That's long. Yeah. Shit. What? He, Yeah. Well, he came in, he went to a hotel room with like a bunch of guns and like held a guy hostage against his will and like stole, you know. His own memorabilia, right? His own shit, basically. But um, I mean, I just think that <laughs> it, well, here's the thing. Personally, it does seem it's it's like, well, I mean, what he did was very extreme. However, in Nevada, the laws on guns are very strict. So mm. They don't like people doing that kind of thing. But nobody likes it. No um, state likes it. <laughs> well, that's why, you know, you shouldn't do it. Mm. And also it's like, dude, OJ, just pick up a phone, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, you can also get the police, you know, like, I mean, I don't know. He wasn't stealing. I guess that was the thing. He's trying to steal it back. He, how like, old was he at the time, though? Like 70? I think he was in his 60s or I something. I mean, how many drugs do you have to be on to be like, you know what? We're going to do this, I mean, guys. He, OJ just needs better friends. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, who is he surrounding he himself friends. with? Who's like, judgment. Yeah, yeah, bro, you should definitely stab her and that fucking dude. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it once. Do it nine times. And, you know, like, who's advising him on this? Then, Bad. It's hey, white people. Hey, you know what, OJ? <laughs> we need to go steal people. your shit back. It's what because it is. They might have bought it, but That's it's your shit. I think somebody did talk him into it. Yeah. I'm, and someone obviously thought, was like, yeah, OJ, you should definitely go into that room with, like, I'll, I'll bring all of our guns. That's what he did. He brought of his other friends too. The, these like weird white people. You got away with murder for the most. You get away with this bullshit. This well, that, exactly. That's what I. You know, he's like he's he's he's. He, I, I yeah. He needs better friends. I think, but. He uh, seems like a nice guy. It's a sociopath. There, of course, he seems like a nice he guy. Seems like a nice guy. I, don't I mean, know. he spent yeah. his whole life look trying to maintain well, the, the appearance of being a nice guy. The thing is, is like he's out now. He lives in Vegas. Like he lives in the same. Why would you city. still live there? <laughs> he, he has to. He has to because well, it's not that he has to. What happened? Well, he after he got out, he has to register, um, it with a public address, mm-hmm. and 
he had the option of going back to Florida, I think, to live with like a family member, mm-hmm. but he didn't maybe his daughter, but he didn't want her address to be public. Mm-hmm. So a friend, obviously one of those good friends, friends in Vegas <laughs> <laughs> was like, OJ, you can stay with me. You know, it's like opportunist, dude. He gets wrapped up with the wrong people, I think. But also, I don't know. I think I think he's very talented as an entertainer yes. and as an athlete and at, he very talented. He, if you know what he would have been a great comedian i think or maybe he would he I better he i think done. he would have been a funnier comedian than a, a better golfer because he's a shitty golfer right but I've, have you seen oj swing it's pretty bad like no. he's that should be a crime too <laughs> he should serve time <laughs> for that um so i uh i think that um yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I forgot what I was saying, but yeah. He, uh, I kind of want to start a band called OJ and his friends. Oh, the OJ, I think he would have been a great comic. That's what I'm, yeah. I'm saying. He has he has to have so many stories. That's a great oh, bit. Yeah. You know? You know, that's a great bit on just like, just if, if, if you could do stand-up comedy, it's just a great bit. Like, man, I just got shitty friends. I just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what. But like, wouldn't it like, to, to like he did, I mean, I guess his, he has a book that he wrote called If I Did It, right? Uh, um, that he basically. He needed, he needed it, it goes, it's like, I did it. And then there's like the little teeny tiny word if, that goes, if. if <laughs> like really tiny. No. Um, yeah, it's crazy. He's out in Vegas. He lives, my family lives out. My, 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 my parents see him out, you know? Wow. Like my dream is to like low key run into him and be like, hey, would you do a podcast with me? Like, wouldn't that be such a great, he would be my co-host. That would be amazing. Man, he won't say shit. Nah, no, he would. He would. No, I think no, he needs like a, a nice white girl to re- rebrand him. You know what I mean? Like he really did his image wrong. <laughs> like, yeah, he needs done. some help. But uh, I, I don't know. We'll see. Only time will tell till my run in with him. He likes like, young pretty girls. I think that he would be very so. open to I think you. He doesn't like young type. pretty girls. So. Yeah. You're, you have the name and the look. You know? But yeah, that's true. I do be. have you the name. <laughs> I feel like you would be very triggering for him. <laughs> Hi, my name's Nicole. Would you yeah. like to do he just podcast? break down and just has a crazy spoke. He's like, what? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, he thinks we're like pranking him. I'm like, they're all named Nicole OJ. <laughs> yeah. yeah, OJ and the Nicole. Oh my God, I love that. That is a great band name. Let's do Let's it. Start it. It's probably taken on Instagram. It's though. gotta be. Oh man. It makes me uh Do you think he did it? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Yeah. Every every I, I, this is the thing. This, uh, it was a long time ago, but when that conversation came up amongst people, I would always say, "Say he was an assassin, right? Say an assassin killed her, right? It would have been just like a just kill you. Him stabbing her nine times. Ripped, they said they saw her neck till it almost wasn't. It was barely attached to her head still. Oh wow! That's when you that's, gave a fuck. That's passion. It's yeah, absolutely. That's a crime of passion. Yeah. Absolutely, you wouldn't do that. A trained killer would have just been doop goodbye. Yeah. You, you know and out I mean? of there. Yeah, and out of there. Like, I I, I did my job. Who wouldn't have left a glove, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's like a real fuck up. You know what I mean? He has a good yeah. advice. Uh, in there, in there, one of his friends said, this is what you should do, man. That's what I'm Leave saying. Leave a glove that's small. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That don't fit. That's what the conversation, that, like, what was that conversation? I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in these conversations where OJ gathers around his, like, idiot friends that are, like, just, criminals waiting to commit crimes via via OJ. Yeah, and they're like, here's what we're going to do, man. And you can just see him like standing there like, yeah, right, man, this is what we need to do, (laughs) you know? Like, what if it was over eight ball too? They're like, hey, OJ, you want to get this eight ball? I don't have any cash. I know what we'll do. We'll go steal your shit yeah, back. Is that what's your for? shit? It's OJ on it. I feel like he could have done back, something it? way less illegal and made so much more money if he just, I don't know, like Anything. started a podcast or something. Like he should have <laughs> just, I don't, he would have been perfect for reality TV. If you're willing to commit a crime, you will appear on reality television, which is kind of a crime. People don't want to give society yeah. itself. People you know what I mean? People don't want to give them any. They probably don't want to put them on anything. Uh, no, I will. thousand Somebody percent will. think they Somebody would. Will for they would have sure. put them on Dancing with the Criminals. You know what <gasps> oh, I mean? And they should amazing. definitely make that a show, Dancing with the Criminals. I would a hundred percent watch <gasps> I that. Love that. Like, also, they've reformed themselves in prison, and now is their time to embarrass themselves on the on the world stage. You know, like that's redemption for all of us. I would watch it. Right like I would watch. I too. feel like I would love to see OJ like dance with Britney Spears. Like they would be a great, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like just them as partners. Man, there's a lot of jokes there too. Yeah, I'm just writing my next bit here. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. That's very. I don't know, man. This is. It was a crazy time, but yeah, I think you kind of hit it on the nose and saying he has like the worst friends. 
for sure. Yeah. So uh, you are standing comedian. What made you pursue comedy? Oh, I I was just like, I always wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just think that the time in which I decided to do it was the right time for me. Mm -hmm. I have always been like a performer. I mean, I would come down and perform in my kitchen for my parents. I would have little improv shows. I was just a rambunctious, crazy kid. Um, I watched my home videos recently and I was like, I a hundred percent see why they put me on medication, but like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I think that, um, and actually my mom, I remember when I would perform in the kitchen with, uh, for like my mom in the morning, she was like, you should be a stand up comedian. And that never left my mind. It was like, you know, when someone tells you something, you know, it just strikes something in your, in your core, I guess. But it wasn't until, um, like three years ago now I started mm -hmm. working for a comedy entertainment agency. Uh, I don't know if I'm, I, I work for levity, which is the company that owned the improvs. Um, and I started doing social media for them. Mm. Um, and, uh, I like would talk as if I still work there. I'm like, should I mention their name? Is this a live I was radio? Gonna say, Do you still work no. there? Okay. Um, no, I don't work there anymore, but I, I got to, I've always, um, loved comedy. When I lived in Florida, I would go to the Palm beach improv and the Fort Lauderdale improv. As soon as like I could drink, you know, I could mm -hmm. go and start seeing shows and, uh, whatever. And then when I moved here, started working for levity and I was doing their social media. I got to watch so much comedy. I was spoiled. I was in the clubs, you know, and I was, um, I just was like, I want to do this. <laughs> I want to like, I, I know I should be doing this. I probably should, even if I don't ever become anything or whatever. Like I like making people laugh and I've always made people laugh. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's two years since I started really two years since I started writing for stand up. And then my two years on stage will be October. So just two years, two years. But I've been working in comedy for three and a half. So but doing it for two for years. performing for two, two years. years. Well, performing oh. will be two years in October. You're doing good. Thank you. You're doing really yeah. good for under two years. I mean, I think what helped was I did improv as a kid. I did drama. I acted. Um, I always love performing and I went to school for like journalism. So I've never felt uncomfortable talking in front of an audience or talking. Mm. I was like mo voted most talkative in high school. Like they didn't give me, they're like, she's good at talking. Like that's why she's here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I think it fits you. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah. She's a Renaissance woman. Mm -hmm. A Renaissance. Yeah. Uh, I am something. I don't know. I, I'm having fun with it. I love it. It's, uh, it's the best and worst thing I ever did because it is very, it's very introspective and very vulnerable. But I think that if people s stick with it, it can be very rewarding, mm. you know? And I think I'm a pretty existential person. So you know how those shows go. They cause you to really look inward sometimes, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. as a person. And, um, but I I just, I love it. I'm never going to stop. I'll be, you know, I'll be performing till I die. Yeah. So. so I told somebody, someone told me, he said, Hey, if something happened where like some big exec got you blackballed and you could never move past where you are now, would you keep doing it? I was like, yeah. I don't really, what do you mean? Like if, if, if your career couldn't, if it's just, you're, you're stunted here, like you were you, never you're just here at yeah. this level or lower and for the rest of your career and you couldn't move up from here, would you, would you, what would you do? Would you quit? And I was like, no, I like it. I'll just keep on doing it. I don't really care. Oh, I mean, does that I, like what, like if you got Harvey Weinstein, do you mean? You know, maybe, yeah. Maybe, basically, <laughs> like, yeah. Dante just would not agree to suck someone's D in the back corner. And they're yeah. like, that's it, Dante. Oh, I thought You're... he was the Harvey Weinstein. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, 100%. I mean, I don't, I never, I don't do things because I want something out of it financially. I do things because I get something from it already, if that makes sense. Um. I think it's very therapeutic for me to get up on stage and to make people laugh because I like to give. And I think when you make people laugh, you're providing a service yeah. and you're providing them with a form of therapy and they're providing you with a form of validation, which is also very therapeutic. 
Yeah, so, it's a good it's a good situation, I think. It's good. It's a good situation if you're in if you're healthy. If you're, you know, if you're in a dark place, it can be also very triggering too. It's very triggered for ninety eight percent of comedians, then because I, I mean, like- I I do I struggle with it. We're all human. No, we're we all, of course. You know, but I think that I think we're all very self aware. If you're a good comic, I think you're self aware. You know, <laughs> I think I think there are maybe might be some comics that aren't self aware, but deep down, I think that they know like what the fuck they're about. You mm-hmm. know, and um. Yeah, I think it's like anything else in your life. It can be uh, a vice or it could be um, healthy for you. So I think it's healthy. I think it's a healthy vice. Yeah, yeah. I think it is, too. I mean, uh, I mean, haven't you guys had days when you're just having like a you're pissed off all day? You go on stage, have a good set. Then you're, yeah, you're for sure. All the time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I always right. wish the club burns down before I get there and I'm in a bad mood and then I get there and everything's great again. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. No. It depends on your set. If you have a bad set, too. <laughs> no, I've never regretted a set, yeah. even if it sucked. Yeah, me neither. I don't think. No, it I mean, I've never regretted was. a set, but I've just like, I can be really hard on myself. Like, I can literally be like, I, I'm like, I'm not funny. I'm not, I'm not funny at all. No one thinks I'm funny. What am I doing? You know what yeah, I mean? I think we all go through that. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think at the, but I know that I am funny and that I can be funny. As long as you don't think that wire right before you go up, I think right before you go up, you have to kind of manipulate yourself to, to put yourself in a, in a space where you know you could destroy this place. Yeah, for sure. You have to, I feel like you have to, I mean, even if you almost got to trick yourself in believing that, you, that you're better than you actually are to just, just be totally free. Yeah. Right there. You, Cause if you're not, you're going to be in your head. You're going to stumble on yourself. That's with maybe, anything. Mm-hmm. I think, because as artists and creators, it's very vulnerable to get up and just be, we're not actors. We're not, a, we're not acting out a scene with a group of people where if we fuck up, you know, it may not be if you, it's more like you're putting yourself out there. This is your truth. This is all on you. You know what I mean? And will you connect with people, you know? So, I mean, I, I love it and I like, I love hearing about the stories about people who were great, who bombed because I don't think it's necessarily about us as like comics necessarily as it is about, you know, maybe you just didn't connect with that audience, but that doesn't mean that you're a shitty or un or unfunny person. If that makes sense. Cause like, have you ever bombed before? Not one time. Of course. Yeah. It's shitty. It's like hard, like bomb bomb. Have you ever bombed like nothing, like zero laughs? Nothing? I mean, no, I've truthfully, I've never not gotten zero. I've never gotten zero laughs, but I've had times where I'm like, this audience fucking hates me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I get it like a, uh, uh, cause like if I don't get laughs at my jokes, I just start making fun of how bad I am. Yeah. It, 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 well, you it, bomb it, in it, style. So that's good. Yeah, you know, for sure. Important. I, I, I don't bomb a lot, but I have bombed or I have, I don't know. I just think that it can be, I'm a very, I'm very like hard on myself. So I know I even like, I come from a family where if you brought an A minus, they'd be like, why didn't you get an A versus, Wait, Oh, mom. great. You got, you got within an A realm. Congratulations. Mom's a judge, you know? so. <laughs> so exactly. Her job is to judge people. And now my job <laughs> is to judge myself. And that's, I'm really good at that. Well, I'll tell you something like does happen. I wanted to start comedy a lot sooner. Right. But my old roommate tried it and I was there to, I was there to witness it. And honestly, to this day, after doing comedy, after seeing thousands of shows, doing whatever, going be on stage a thousand times, whatever. I don't know how many times I've been on stage a lot, but then I think to myself, I'm like, he's scared. It's still the worst bomb I've ever seen in my life. Really? And it was before I started. I mean, <laughs> maybe it's the extreme of it because you don't, you haven't seen it yet, and that's the first one you ever saw. This like is that. an open mic. I mean, that's like no, no, it wasn't open. I tell you what oh, it was. It? it was a spoken words event, oh. right? Oh no! And Our they, and, awful. And I was his bringer. <laughs> so he had to bring like like friends to go up at a spoken words and people are giving speeches like thou art thy wind and thy soul <laughs> and all this with you know dreadlocks incense burning what are those places they you didn't know? come for dick jokes maybe they weren't laughing <laughs> maybe they were just high <laughs> maybe I don't know but this is what happened so he goes up and I'm talking about I think this these jokes are funny 
he told them to me before we go at home. I'm like, oh, these jokes are funny. Are they're they really good. funny though? No, they were. I thought they were funny. They were. They were. There was a Would black. Would you dude. perform any of them? But they was, they're about black dude. He's a him being a black dude. So it, it, it was a black. Oh I, man, you OJ Simpson him. Yeah, you told him it was a good idea. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, maybe I, I did. told him yeah. he needed maybe better friends. <laughs> he fucked up. Yeah, no, man. That's a bad feeling too when you give somebody a joke and then they go on stage and it bombs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> it, it was, but he went up, right? So he went up, and then he like. It was it was so quiet. I remember at a point where I could literally hear a car going by the building, like, <laughs> and then it was so because it was like 60, 70 people in there. That's just, that's the first time he's ever on stage. 60, 70 people, spoken words, not the best way to build your confidence, you know. And he goes there, and then like first joke, nothing. I'm talk, and then to the point where his boy, he started praying for him. <laughs> but the, the problem was he was praying so loud. I would say about the third of the room could hear him. He was saying, Godfather, please give my friend some laughs. This isn't working out very well. <laughs> and then he just just praying, but he, everyone can hear him. He's praying. And then and then all of a sudden the band behind him starts like messing around. Like because they got so bored. Oh like, doof, 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 doof. And then the guy goes, and he turns around and goes, Y'all really gonna y'all really gonna play an instrument during my uh, set? And he got he was like I, and the band dude goes, I think you need to pick up an instrument. And then, and <laughs> oh my God. And that's then, so and, then bad. He, and then he stared at my boy Chris for like a minute straight, like kind of zoned into my friend's face. And then they called us up. And then, they, and then the host came out and looked like she was like, okay, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like he got knocked out. You know, the referee comes in and just kind of like, so yeah. He got kicked off stage. I get. I don't know what you want to call that. They played him off. Like yeah, they played him, yeah, off. They played him off. Because the, his last moment was he just stared. What at is my he boy doing Chris. now? I think he's a truck driver. Wow. I was like I thought yeah. you were gonna say he like is headlining the Ontario yeah. Improv. Yeah. No. No. He's a manager. Never. I don't think he, he never never did comedy ever again. I don't blame him. I I wanted to do comedy sooner, mm -hmm. but I just got a corporate job instead. Mm -hmm. What's nothing wrong with that? Yeah. But you know, with that situation though, there's no like awareness that now that we're comedians, we know that that's a bad situation. But when you haven't been doing comedy, you're like, oh, people laugh. You know, like it's. But like, I've also seen people bomb. Like they're very new at comedy, but they're so like cute, not cute, but they're so likable. Yeah. That it's funny. You know what I mean? They're yeah. like recovery or like trying to. You're trying to watch. They're you're watching them try and figure it out. You know what I mean? I think it just depends because like, here's the thing. You're not going to crush when you first start doing comedy. Like, and you know what I mean? Like if you're just starting going to doing mics and like learning how to write or whatever, you're not going to crush right off the bat. Like, I think you can get good. I think some people are just naturally good at like naturally good writers or whatever. But if you're not, if you don't have that background, if you didn't come from like a writing background or a performing background, you can tell people are uncomfortable on stage, but I think that if you're likable, you can work at becoming a better performer, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? You have to have a likability to you. Some people could just, some people just have a, a certain amount of energy. Right. That just carries them through. I've seen that happen. Like I've seen. Of course. I think some people are just like, there are some people who just naturally have it, but for people who it doesn't come natural to you, some people do mics not to necessarily become a, a comedian. Some people do it just to get better at public speaking. Mm. They might have a job or like something where they need to get more comfortable I've talking in front I've of people. Do that, I mean, do that actually. we've all seen those mics where like, okay, you're not a comic. <laughs> you, know I mean? you don't even want to be a comic. <laughs> you, I don't know. We don't, maybe it's a midlife crisis. We don't know. Instead of buying a Porsche, you came here. So you know what I mean? Sad. But, um, but also, you know, there's just, you see young people trying it out a lot of, you know, and you're like, you, we're probably not going to see you again, but you know, you're a likable person. We don't want you to die. You know, <laughs> I, saw, I saw a guy, he was a motivational speaker. And, uh, I will say that, uh, I don't think he's very good at his job. Cause just like you're back at me. If you don't get laughs, I wasn't motivated at all. Not at all. No, I was no. just like, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, was it a Ted it, talk was it in the form of Ted talks. I don't know. He was just saying like how talked about how his life, and I don't know, just talked about himself. Yeah. And it wasn't just, it wasn't very inspiring. It sounds very unmotivating. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't, I still just want to sit in this chair. I don't want to do anything. I don't know. Yeah. People sometimes, motive, most, a lot of motive, a good, I, that's like a, 
feels like a I don't know. I, I just don't know any. So when I saw this guy, I don't know. They probably don't have a place to meet at, obviously, because they don't. Oh, like they have come their to, own open mics. Yeah, they don't have that. Uh, yeah, oh, they, like to practice. How do you motiv- train? Yeah, for that? how do you train like, for that? You just go to the Marriott know. and you <laughs> and you tell people. Yeah, yeah like up. at what point <laughs> you did it. you? Yeah. At what point <laughs> did you transition <laughs> from like a regular person to a motivational speaker? Like, where is that? Where is the like line? I think that? I definitely like it because I think it comes from a. It's really good intentions because mm. you're just trying to make help people. Find you know be, be better you know and I think that's a that's a great thing, but how do you train for that? Like it sucks to fail. I want anyone that does that to succeed because your intentions are good. You just want to help people. You know. I, I are feel- you a motivational speaker or are you just rich? You know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Like- <laughs> <laughs> I like Tony Robbins. Do you like him? Yeah. I've cried sometimes. It's some, I think I don't know if it was a movie. He he's just he's just so. I don't I dislike so nice him. People. There's just something about him that's not authentic to me. Mm. I don't know. He tried to talk to you, didn't he? No, I think, no, I've seen, I've grown up knowing about him and like, I know, I see why he has a cult following. He's very, um, he has like typical, uh, what's the term when you're like, uh, you're a good, like, I forget what the term is because I'm stoned, but like he's very charismatic, yeah. you know what I mean? And charming. And, you know, he's nice looking. I mean, to some people might find him attractive or nice whatever. And he has yeah. a he has a presence. So, like, I see why people are very drawn to him. Mm-hmm. So but I just think that he doesn't speak for everyone. I also don't know his full story. You know what I mean? I'm sure it's like a struggle bucket list of mm-hmm. things that he yeah. probably went through to get to where he is now. Uh, I don't know. I just, I think it's hard. I think people can be very motivated by other people's stories, Mm -hmm. but I also think that um, it's just not realistic for everyone too, but he does help so many people. So he's obviously doing something right. I like Gary V. You guys know who he is? I don't know who that is. You know Gary V? I've seen it on Facebook. Yeah. I like him a lot. He goes, the, 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 the statement that he got, he's the only actual motivational speaker, motivation guy I've ever followed ever. But he, the, the, how he got me was somebody I was riding with was was playing him, and he goes, 99% of the things you worry about really don't matter. They make no your show got canceled. That person's talking about you. Like if you're really if you just work on your craft and work on what you love and what you're doing, they nobody can really stop you. That person, you know, I didn't get that promotion because of this person. Then no, if you're that good, they're going to promote you. It doesn't matter. You don't stop blaming others and stop. And because these thoughts, all they do is hinder you from accomplishing your goals, basically. Yeah. And then I was like, it's true. And then was I tried had, to be did, that. What way, did he hard. do? What was his career? He, he like owns like part of, he owns stock in Facebook, Snapchat, I think Instagram, I think. I'm not sure, but he, he's very, I think yeah, he's worth like a few hundred million. It seems like all he does is try to. It seems he he seems very genuine. I don't know. You don't know what. Sometimes I, it's I don't not care. that I don't think that he's not genuine because I think that he has to be genuine to be motivating for people. I just think that I don't know. I I'm not a religious person. Mm-hmm. I think that there's like is he? I think he's kind of religious now, like oh, Tony is he? Robbins. Is, he looks like it. That. Doesn't he? he like remember in Shallow Hal, he sees Hal in the thing, and he's like, "Devils be gone." Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, but he always swears. He makes sure. Does he? He's even talked about how he like swears. Like he says the f word. Oh, he says the f word. He says fuck. Whatever. But oh, like, to sort of come 100%. down to like the people's. You I know, think there's. Level. I've seen. I a hundred percent. Like I like everything he says. I just. You won't catch me paying money to go oh, see no, Tony no, Robbins in concert. No. I don't care who's opening for him. I don't give a fuck if it's Chris Rock. You know what I mean? Like I might pay well, to maybe. go see Gary Vee. Yeah. yeah. I might go. I might pay. I don't know. Like 10, 20 bucks. I would more. I would. I'm mad. I, I think this is like the more existential, existential side of me. But I'm like, I want to go pay to see a scientist talk about life on other planets. You know what I mean? I'm like hopeful in that way. Like we can leave, you know? No. Uh, but yeah. No, he's not. Uh, he, he's obviously doing, you know, something right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, this is the, I think motivation is good because you need it a lot. A hundred percent. It's like, it's like, it's like you, like you, it's like showers. They say you need it as consistent as much as you need a shower. Like every day you need, you need to take a shower, right? Like that's how, that's how much you need it. It's true. Cause it runs out. Like you're, you're like, you're motivated one day and the next day you're like, man, I don't want to do this shit anymore. Like, and then you got to find that, the inner motivation in yourself. So sometimes it, it may come from other people. 
A hundred percent. I think what it is, is like finding the people you want to hear it from. That's I just true. don't want to hear true. it from Tony yeah. Robbins. Yeah. Like, with, yeah. yeah. I'm That's like, funny. come on, dude. Like you're a tall, attractive white male. Like I don't, I hate most of you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but I'm sure what he's saying is very healthy. I, I think that's what it is, is finding the right people to motivate, finding good friends, you know, good o- motivating OJ friends. Sim- not OJ yeah, yeah, friends. Yeah, not OJ friends. Yeah, that's a new word we now. We should do all type of crazy stuff. <laughs> but I, I think I think that is cool. I mean, I think that's the way, you know, in, in a way, like, I feel like he's had, OJ's had a lot of excuses made for him in his life. Like, the like, yeah. Oh, I mean, I don't know if the friends thing is true. I mean, maybe you're right, you know, but at the end of the day, you're still a man. You, you think, though, decisions. if he just had one good friend to be like, hey, man, this is not a good idea. That's all it would have taken. He, he, he needed like be, Tony Robbins in his life yeah. <laughs> to be like what you need to be doing. He must be easy down. to convince to do shit. That's what I'm like, saying. Hey, OJ. Yeah. Easily influenced. Hey, OJ. Absolutely. Let's go beat up these That's kids. all it took. Like, I think that's the kind of person he is, though. He's always tried to fit into wherever he goes, and he's sort of a chameleon and sort of becomes what the things are that are around yeah. him. Mm-hmm. You know what's crazy? Like, I'm, I'm into astrology, and all the crazy people are my sign. OJ Simpson's my sign. He is? Uh, Mike Tyson's my sign. Michael Vick is my sign. Like, what's your sign? I'm a cancer. My right. boyfriend's a cancer. Yeah, I guess. Um, what sign are you? I'm an Aquarius. Are they good together? Um, I, I think it could work. I don't think it, we're bad. It could work. Yeah, it's work. I think it, I think it could all work. Yeah, you know, it's to me. It's isn't like, your is your wife an Aquarius? She's a Sagittarius. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. and that works. That, a lot of I don't know that that happens a lot. Yeah, Cancer Sagittarius Aquarius Cancer doesn't happen you? a lot. I'm a Capricorn. You're in December or early January? Early January. I, w- I think I'm on the cusp, but I'm more definitely more in Aquarius. She works hard. Oh, okay. What, yeah. do, what do you? What, what day? January one, two, three. January twenty third. Oh, that's cool. oh that okay, is right got there. it. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're the same month. That's mm-hmm. right. So you're kind of both. I'm definitely so much more in Aquarius than I am a Capricorn, but I think I'm stubborn. That's I don't know if that's a, is you, that the Capricorn. You said your mom stayed like right, to to like she stayed, what she like kept you in to that. Make oh you yeah. Capricorn. Oh, no, I was like, I was in my room a lot growing up, read a lot of books. No, no, when she was pregnant with you. Oh, she did, kept me in? She kept, did she keep you in to, to, to like, who was that? That was not me. That wasn't you? Oh, I, was, I thought when you meant she kept me in, I was like, yeah, I was grounded a lot. No offense. Kid oh. I, I met, a, I forgot who it was, a woman. Uh, she was an Aquarius, barely. And they said even though her mom went to labor, she just held the baby in. Oh, my God. So she refused to have a Capricorn baby. That's really dangerous. Yeah, oh, no, like, that was not my mom. I'm sure she wanted me out as soon as possible. What year were you born? 87. Okay. One, two, three, I was going to see if she was the same year. Uh, we're year of the sheep, even though we're 10 years We apart. actually get along very I'm the, well. Yeah. a rabbit, I think. That's the, the same. Oh as, wait, isn't that no? That's a different one, right? What? Are we we're, eighty-seven? Yeah, we're very compatible with them. With the rabbits? Yeah, and, yeah. and furry. furry you're, uh, th- that's actually Chinese, rabbit Aquarius yeah. is the same thing as Michael Jordan. And he was twenty-three. That is kind of cool. Was he really? Mm-hmm. God. Oh God, maybe you guys. Uh, Are you twenty? And I played basketball growing up. Yeah. Oh. No, well, my birthday is the twenty-third. Oh my God, you're so wise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're Michael Jordan, white woman. I would love to be compared to anything. I could be like the Michael Jordan of weed. <laughs> Maybe. I like no, that. I'm not any. I have. I, I'm not anywhere near Michael Jordan in anything in my life. I'm. I'm more like the Dennis Rodman of something. <laughs> Michael Jordan would be a good inspirational speaker, though. I've heard. Oh, a hundred percent. Really good. I would love to hear him. LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Man, I wish I could go to LeBron James's school. I would be so sick at it. I just be like, can I play basketball all day? This is what I excel at. Yeah, I feel sorry for him sometimes because, like, he's so, he's so scrutinized for every little thing he does. Like, any That's little thing. That's what being like, in the spotlight is about, though. True. And we live in the digital age. Like, because of media, too. If Michael Jordan was around age. now. Oh, hell yeah. If Michael would, Jordan was around now, he ha- didn't he cheat on his wife? Didn't she, he? Or didn't he like have an affair or something? Or hit, they got divorced or something? They got divorced. I don't, I don't LeBron know. LeBron James sure. or Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan didn't something. Oh. Wasn't there like a scandal or didn't he have a scandal or something? He's not perfect, is he? Nobody's perfect. Right. LeBron also, honestly looks perfect one? on paper. No, that's Kobe. Kobe, Kobe's Kobe the raper. Bryant's the raper. Yeah. Yes, he's right. the raper. <laughs> Gave He's his wife the big old ring. But then, like, I that feel, was bad. I that think was, that was, that was hard for the me. ring. Then, in their, in their <laughs> yeah. underwear, had like six different types of semen in it. Oh my God. Yeah, How many just, types are there? 
<laughs> I don't know. There's six different people semen. Well, there's 31 flavors, so. <laughs> that's only one of our underwears. Like, good God. Wait, is that true? Six types of semen? Some shit like that. Something crazy like that. Could that be like, how can that? I'm confused. Yeah. I mean, I get confused. I don't know. Have, do you think we've had them all? <laughs> like, how do they find that? Like, I don't even remember. Like, did he really R word her? R word. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, if you have six different, it's, it's, you know, yeah. you just, you're pretty, uh, you're pretty out there. They did uh, DNA testing on her, on her underwear is what you're saying. Yeah. And I, oh, okay. I, I think they tested her, but this the crazy thing is he had his, he scored 81 points in the game that year. Like that really, that really uh, helped him out. <laughs> I mean, that really uh, pushed him to work hard. I bet it did. Yeah. yeah. You got to prove yourself. Yeah, he's like, man, people, I'm not going he, to jail. he worked so hard, people <laughs> forgot about that. Like, people yeah. forgot about what he did. No, I, I I have a lot of respect for him because I always say he was between him, Jordan, and LeBron or something. He's the least, he's the least gifted one. Kobe? He, yeah, because he's he's not as strong. He's not as big. He, he you know, he just has a lot, but his he's will. He's extremely gifted, though. No, he's very, of course, he's gifted. But, like, out of the three of them. Put it this way. Jordan was the third pick out of uh, in the NBA draft. LeBron was the first pick. Kobe was 13th. Yeah, but he can speak Italian. That's hot. Okay. <laughs> so that's, like, number one in my book. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, how many languages can LeBron speak and Michael Jordan? That's a really good point, Rachel. I think, LeBron can, I think LeBron can speak. Jordan can speak. LeBron can speak two. How many? He, two. What are they? I mean, what are they? English and Ebonics. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Ebonics <laughs> is not, not a language. recognized language. No. And that means that uh, Michael or that Kobe can speak three languages. There you go. I don't know. He speaks what, fluent Italian? I don't really? think he can speak Ebonics. Yeah. He, he when, when growing up, Kobe's dad, I think, had to like take a job in the military or go somewhere and they moved over to Italy. So he Kobe's lived dad there. played, it was a professional player in the NBA, but also in Italy. Oh, wow. And Kobe had to move there to live there. and So we learned Italian. Mm -hmm. Was he, is because of basketball he was there? Yeah, his dad played. Yeah. I remember, I don't remember what it was, but it had something to do with his dad. Mm. So I was like, what? Yeah. And then he lived in Philly, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was obsessed with Kobe. I was a big fan of like the Lakers during like, the like early 2000 because when I, I grew up playing basketball from fifth grade up until like college, I'm trying to find a basketball team out here, a comics team to join because people think that I can't hoop, but I can. So that's all I'm saying. Uh, but you got, you got the body for it. You're tall, Thank linky. You. Um, but I loved like the Lakers during that time. I was such a huge fan. I would play by the way. I'm terrible, but I would do it. So we need to find the it. comic league that like we just need a, I in there. As as there, indoors, I there's, there's a guy's so league, but I'll definitely play on the girls' league. I'll play co-ed. <laughs> I have no shame. I just can't injure myself. <laughs> yeah. I can't afford to. I can't afford oh, it. No. I want to play against girls. I'm a free I'm agent, though. Yeah, I think that's well, a good do idea. we start a comic basketball league? Our own. I know there is one. I know they uh, there already is one, but I'm like, do we just like start our own? Yeah, why not? <laughs> cool. It might just be you two. What? <laughs> Just the two of us. We're going to be looking good, though. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you got to just, I, I would DM every gay female comedian. I think that's your best way to start. That's, Could you just be our coach? There you go. Well, can I be coach slash player? I want to play. What position? I wig. Are you a two? Uh, I play two, but I think for women, I'd be power forward. Yeah, for sure. Look at my body. For sure. Power forward. We're going to have to box you out. Power forward. <laughs> I don't know what any of this means, by the way. Oh my God, Powerful we're gonna have to teach you. Guy. What's that? We're gonna have to teach you. Oh yeah, I need to learn. Forwards are in like usually the back mostly. That seems down. Cool. There's Backwards. like four or five. <laughs> they're more. They're good for defense too. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Um, you play? I haven't played in a while, but um, yeah. Every 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 time I've played in the last, uh, I don't know, like every two years, I'm, I play once for like ten minutes. Like I, it's, it's, I loved it as a kid. I played nah, every we would have to kid. play a, a game. Yeah. Well, no, I have, but it's been a while, and you know, I was in pain. What? I think one of the last times I played it was. That's why you can be our coach. When you stop playing, you become our coach. Okay, I'll be your coach. I don't know if I'll be a good, fine, whatever. You have to be our motivational speaker. Yeah, you have positive. to keep the morale on positive. the team. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, I, I don't know. It's gonna be hard for you to convince me. I think it's gonna be one of those. Things that like I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna do now. And when it actually happens, I'm gonna be like, you know what? I can't do it. The day I see you come on the court, 
<laughs> like, I'm one of those guys. Like, I, I look good on the court. I dress good. That's what good. I'm saying. You're going to be all yeah, swagged trash, out. Trash. You're not going to want to, like, ruin, like, scuff up your shoes. I still got shoes. I still do He's it. not going to want to sweat in his jerseys. Yes, I will. You will? That's yeah. true. I just wait, wear a shitty gonna, jersey. Okay. Wait, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put a team together, but you're going to uniform us. Yes, absolutely. You'll sponsor us. All right, you know yeah, what? We'll I don't know good. about all this. I didn't commit to this. I did earlier, no, you but... Did. No, you I'm want us to look backtrack. good, don't you? Yes, but I really wish you would figure this I'm out. I'm going to be like, Flashback oh. LA is our sponsor. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no. Girls are going to... Yes. We'll get another sponsor. You know what? This podcast... Podcast is coming to a close. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, we're out of time. And uh, thank you so much for our Thanks special for guest, Rachel me. Wolfson and co host Nikki Davis. Miller, thank you. Follow me Thanks. on social media. So have a good night. Bye bye. Oh, wait. Oh. I thought we were going to plug our social. Oh, shit. No, it's fine. We can still do oh, okay. it. Okay, you know what? You she can plug. What's your social? Go ahead. Oh, you can do it. Just follow me at Wolfie Comedy. And, and, and edit that part out. If not, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs>